Yeah, hi there everybody and uh, welcome to Ireland. As you know, we're the most indebted nation in the world. It's Friday the 25th of September 2009 and it's just after 11 o'clock in the morning. And I just want to talk about a couple of things if I could today. The first thing I want to talk about is an article in the Irish Times this morning. Uh, interesting reading. Uh, written by a girl called Una McCaffrey. And the headline is, it says... The central statistics of CSO figures show that the recession is weakening. That's in relation to Ireland. And what the figures show basically is the first three months, our GDP went down by 11, uh, sorry, 13.1, and uh, the GDP went down 11.6 in the second three months. So overall that reads at something like about 12%. Okay, So it looks like by the end of the year the situation will be between 10 and 12%. Our GDP will have gone down by 10 or 12%. And this just brought it to mind because I, I, I just want to do it while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, if, if you make that projection forward into 2010 and 2011 and you sort of extrapolate normal figures out of that that obviously they're going to be in, they know what the problem is so they're going to have to apply basic economics and try and stabilize the thing the thing is going to get slightly better but you know we more than any other country in the world are affected by this this is a giant ponzi scheme we were involved in the bubbles burst and it's going to take a considerable amount of time before it starts to improve again or even bottom out really and I, I've made the, this is my personal belief, I think that in 19, uh, 2010, our GDP will go down by about 8%. And then I think in 2011, it'll be about 5%. Now, when you add those up, add those amounts up, they come to around about 10 and 8, 23%. And 23% of what our GDP was last year, say at the beginning of last year, which is 2008, before all this crisis hit, uh, we had a GDP well in excess of 200 billion, but let's round it off because it makes it easier from, from my point of view and from everybody's point of view to understand it. Uh, basically what it's saying is that over the next three years, what I'm saying is over the next three years, there be, we will have lost 46 billion. 46 billion. And uh, out of our GDP. Now, if it starts leveling off, so we'll have lost those three years from 2008. We have 2009, 2010, 2011. So we've got these three years gone down like this, okay? And then let's say we get to the bottom and we bump along the bottom for a year or whatever. And then we start to grow back again. In order to make up 46 billion euros, it will take, even at a, a fantastic growth pattern, which would be around about five percent that's going to take between eight and ten years that's what that's going to take so um, the Una McCaffrey article is full of contradictions and anyway I, 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 if you if you want to read it fine if if not there's not I understand but one of the key things that she raises and which I can't understand you see these people all work off an agenda and they, they don't want to face the truth. They'll do anything but face the truth. They'll tell you a multitude of lies and everything else. Just listen to one of these. This is a statement. It says, When the profits of multinational companies based in the Republic of Ireland are included in the CSO figures, the economy was stable between the first two quarters and it declined only by 8.4% annually. So she's making the projection that if you include multinational companies their profits that they make in the Republic of Ireland. Una, I hate to, I hate to knock, your, uh, knock you off your pedestal, but the bottom line about it is, they repatriate their multinational profits. They're not in Ireland for altruistic purposes. They're not here for our benefit. Multinational companies are not here for our benefit. Contrary to what you might think or might want other people to believe. They're only here for one purpose only, profit. And that profit goes back to their mother companies. 
wherever they're based. United States, Canada, or wherever they are, England, or wherever, Europe. Anyway, the, the general thrust of the, of, the, of the article is the recession is weakening. Of course it's going to weaken. We fell off a friggin' we fell off a friggin' cliff. What do you think it's gonna do? The bottom line about it is we're still drowning. Anyway, uh, the next thing I want to deal with is I'm gonna put it up on the screen, and it's a graph, it's a chart, and uh, I, I, ju I just have to, we have to talk, ha have a bit of a conversation about the, the parameters of the chart. Yeah, hey everybody. Uh, Again, this is uh, just this index is called the Baltic Dry Index, and what it, what it is, it's a it's a commercial index for people who want to ship commodities around the world, and uh, they need to know because in order to ship the commodities, they need to put them into physical physically put them into ships, and the reason that economists, certainly good economists, like this index is it's extremely difficult to manipulate this index. And it's not given over to the vagaries of gambling. If you think of the equities market, you think of the gilts market, and certainly the forex market, it's all based on some form of gambling about the outcome of it. This is not. This this is just a pure factual assessment of what shipping rates are going to be on a day to day basis. And you can see what's happened. This graph covers a period from two thousand and one up to two, up to now, and you can see that from 2001 after a few little mini bips down the thing went through an exponential growth pattern up to eleven thousand six hundred pounds uh, the, this is a price in sterling I think it's per thousand tons this is and anyway uh, you can see then what happened was the recession the big the bubble burst all over the all over the western world it's collapsed and we have ships land idle all over the place and uh, it's tried to make a uh, make a sort of a, a rally, as you can see, on January the first, January the second, around about that time, it started to pick up again, and it got back up to uh, nearly four, four what's it, three thousand eight hundred or something, and it's fallen back down again to today to two thousand four hundred. So we can see it's at about a fifth of what it was uh, just a year ago, or less than a year ago. And there's every possibility, based on the fact that it's turned back down again, that we could be in for what's called a double dip recession. That we could be in for another period of very funny sets of circumstances. Uh, because they're saying that this, this, uh, the blip upwards from January the first was due to the input that America and the European economies put put into the economies. The the the. The, the, the what they call the quantitative easing or the printing of money and that uh, its effect may have died off and uh, it's just a very very interesting insight a real insight into what goes on in at international capital level and, and this is a big macro chart this is a, this is one of the biggest and most important macro charts that you can examine it just makes for very very interesting deductions that's all yeah you know if you're a public official and uh, you misappropriate public funds for your own benefit, in most countries in the world, what happens to you is you have to pay the money back and you're sacked. And in some of the countries, you pay the money back, you're sacked, and you get stuck in the pokey. You get locked up, okay? No, no, in Ireland what they do is they go along and they have a cup of coffee with you. And then what they do is they give you a million euros. They ask you to resign. They ask you to resign. Former director of FOSS, Roddy Malloy, resigned because he was given a million euro golden handshake, a doll committee was told yesterday. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to come back to this Roddy Malloy uh, circus uh, later. There's some information that has come to my hand, but I have to, I have to check it out. I don't want to be giving out false information on YouTube. So, uh, just the, we live in truly extraordinary times when this sort of situation can go on, and our media says little or nothing about it. That's all. Thank you very much. We we'll talk again.